So blood sugars. The reason that blood sugars are so important is because they it's not just about how we're responding to uh, it's not just about how we respond to food or it's not just about um you know on my finger prick test of oh my blood sugars are balanced you know that's okay that's a good number it it, it doesn't just contribute to diabetes blood sugars are so contributing to so many conditions so we've mentioned here the for all oh, the name fell off the top right one uh that we've uh we've mentioned oh, yes. here the four key blood sugar hormones there are actually seven so you've got insulin, which lowers blood sugar and increases fat storage. So what's interesting is high insulin levels also lower sex hormone binding globulin. And so that then dumps excess estrogen into the system. So if we've got insulin kind of needing to be used regularly, which it would be with uh, quite a lot of the standard Western diet, then we are going to have this uh, knock-on effect with estrogen. So we definitely don't want to be having um, insulin out of balance and having too much of it. Like so you said, endometriosis, it's, it's not a sex hormone issue, but it is aggravated with sex hormone imbalance. So when there is more estrogen being dumped in the system, then the, that is going to stimulate growth of endometriosis. Yeah, absolutely. Making that so, connection between high insulin and high estrogen, high estrogen, therefore contributing towards the endometriosis situation. Yes. So leptin is the name that's missed off the top right. So leptin from blood sugars reduces appetite, but it's pro-inflammatory. So if again we have this imbalance of leptin, if we've got too much leptin going on it's going to be inflammatory. So it has a dual role as a hormone and a cytokine. Now you may remember from the pandemic, everyone talking about cytokine storms, cytokines, it, it, it's inflammation. It's actually sort of like storm of inflammation happening in the body. So leptin works not only as a hormone to reduce our appetite, it's also part of this inflammation storm. So it just makes sense, doesn't it? That if our leptin is out of balance, we're going to have more inflammation. And if endometriosis is an inflammation condition, we don't want that. So we want to make sure that we're bringing that into balance. So leptin stimulates endometriosis in mouse models. This is a very, very recent study. Um, and leptin may play a role in the development of endometriosis, a study of 15 women. So that's a very interesting, very new uh, bit of research that starts to corroborate this connection with blood sugars. So ghrelin is our hunger hormone. It's what makes your tummy rumble when you're hungry and it stimulates appetite. It's anti-inflammatory and it increases the production of TH2 and the regulatory T cells. So we want that one to be balanced. We want that one to be in you know, full working order, which it ends up not being if we are, uh, if our blood sugars are unstable and we are on a very high uh, car refined carbohydrate diet. And then we have cholecystokinin or CCK, which is the satisfaction hormone. And this is the one that is connected with gut motility. So that whole thing with our, you know, hormones, guts, et cetera, cholecystokinin is this, is this motilin connection. So these already, we can see how implicated they are with the sex hormones. So why would we just focus over here when we need to get these balanced too? They're gonna to do a lot of that job for us. So we talk about this all the time. What we mean by these unstable blood sugars are, you know, our blood sugars are supposed to be this nice green wave that's happening. Um, what happens though with most standard diets is uh, we get these blood sugar spikes in response to either food that we've eaten. So I've eaten a piece of toast, I've eaten, um, I've snacked on a bit of chocolate, um, I've had some biscuits. I will have a big sugar uh, sort of dump into my bloodstream, which is going to spike my blood sugar. And in response, I'm going to get a hit of insulin. So when I have the insulin, my blood sugars are gonna drop all the way back down again. It's like a rebound, like the, the body's gone, oh wow, they've just dumped a load of sugar in the bloodstream. I need to produce enough insulin in case they do that again. Um, but then what happens, our insulin drops and we're hungry, so we go and eat again. So we might snack on a bit of fruit again, blood sugars rise. 
So the other reason that our blood sugars would rise would be in response to what we've eaten, but also in response to cortisol. So cortisol is a stress hormone. So if we're stressed, we will also get this blood sugar peak. But it's also not just the emotional or physical stress that we have to be under. It could be because we've eaten a food that we're intolerant to. So these are the reasons why we would be spiking blood sugars.